Everyone deserves just to exist. Like, they don't have to talk about it. It's not up to them. It's, it's definitely not up to a uh, trans, non-binary or LGBTQ plus person to, te- to, to educate you about why, why they're the way they are or how people are different. Like, that's up to you, really. Welcome to Taiwan Plus After Hours. We learn about Taiwan through our colleagues' After Hours activities. I'm your host, Eric Tsai, and today we have Rick Glauer with us. Hi. Thanks, thanks for coming on. That's um, fine. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> in Taiwan, one of the biggest issues that's still around is this international, like different uh, from, people from different countries and getting married. Um, this has been a big issue. When people say Taiwan is the first place in Asia for equal marriage, it's not exactly true because it's more like same-sex marriage. And you can even put marriage in quotation marks because they had to put marriage in quotation marks pretty much, right? They couldn't put it in the t- top of the legislation. So there's two major holes. One is that the rights aren't equal because Taiwanese same-sex couples cannot adopt in the same way that heterosexual couples can. And the other one is that Taiwan's marriage law is relates to if you're marrying someone that's not from Taiwan, it relies on that country's marriage law for it to be legal. Mm. If you come from a a country that doesn't that hasn't legalized same-sex marriage and you want to marry a Taiwanese person, that's not yet possible under Taiwanese law. Well, I come from the UK where same-sex marriage is legal, so I, that's, that process is fine. I can still get married in, in Taiwan to another, someone of the same sex as me. I spoke with um, Nai Jia before, and then we talked a little you know, about same, similar issues, and um, at the end of it, I did ask her about it, what she saw, what the queer community, you know, things that grow. I think one thing that she brought up that was really clear, she was like, same-sex marriage is allowed here. And again, with huge parentheses around it, there's still a lot of things that needs to be changed and to to get truly equal rights. And she's saying like, there's that and at the same time, transgender issues is, is a huge issue that is probably going to be the next, the next big challenge to tackle. Um, like, what do you think? Yeah, I think that's absolutely something we should all be watching. Um, I was really heartened to see, I mean, actually the Trans Pride March in Taiwan took place before the main LGBT march, and I was really heartened to see so many people out and about, and despite the rain. Um, and I think that's a sign that this is now on the agenda for, for, for human rights, that trans rights are obviously human rights. There is a growing consensus among, among LGBT activists that this is something that they need to pursue, and they are looking to, you know, pursue the changes in the law that would allow people to change their gender on their the gender marker on their identification documents without undergoing surgery, these sorts of rights that we see in other places around the world. Um, so I think that's, yeah, I think it's definitely something we're going to see more and more of. You know, it's all about visibility, isn't it? I mean, LGBT people have existed for ages, trans people exist. You know, it's just when they feel more comfortable, when society gives a chance for them to be seen or to have a voice, we're going to see more and more of it. Yeah. Um, so I think I hope I hope that's a, a cause that the rest of the LGBT community can get behind, as well as like we said, like there's a huge civil society here that looks out for human rights. So I hope that's the next. Yeah, I hope that's the next frontier. Yeah. You know, I've talked to some of my more straight friends, I guess, and it was like I think for them, like the the idea of you know gay and lesbian has been it's it's. People understand it a little bit better, but then people are still understanding more about transgender and gender identity. Um, just because, you know, even myself, I still f- try to find, I guess, um, respectful ways to clear up some of the understandings, the misunderstandings or questions that I have. Like some people, if people are asking you about like, oh, what is, what is it like being, I, I don't even know how to ask that question. But like, like if people ask questions, like want to know more. I think you've got to think about what would be polite and what sort of way would you like to be spoken to? Like, I think I think a lot of people forget how LGBTQ issues should be approached because a lot of the conversation has been normalised, but it's actually pretty bizarre. Like, it's not okay to ask somebody directly like, oh, but what gender are you, right? Like, you wouldn't ask that to someone anyway. You wouldn't ask them what their genitalia is like or whether they've done anything to them recently like you know and in the same way with 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 sexuality you don't ask people what they do in the bedroom in in normal life right you don't 
I, I don't know anything about what you do in the bedroom. So, you know, these sorts of questions, if it's not relevant, if it's not relevant to your situation, <laughs> why do you need to ask? Yeah, yeah, if you're yeah. at work, you know, I, d I think that person will, will hopefully tell you, and if you get it wrong, they'll, they'll probably politely correct you, and then and then do it right from then on. You know, um, especially if it's something like work or you know a party or something like these people, everyone deserves just to exist. Like they don't have to talk about it. It's not up to them. It's it's definitely not up to. Uh, trans, non-binary or LGBTQ plus person to, te to, to educate you about why why they're the way they are or how people are different. Like, that's up to you, really. Um, but having said that, I think a lot of people are hopefully open that if people want to learn, they would, if it's done in a respectful, friendly way and in the right environment, they would want to know. I mean, I think we all must be really aware that like trans people are under attack all around the world. <laughs> that it is part of this backlash that we're seeing at the moment. It's almost, you know, parts of the LGBTQ community are turning on them. There's kind of a sort of pro-feminist but anti-trans movement, you know, the, the, the TERFs are trans, exclusionary radical feminists. So I think, like, trans people need all the friends they can get, really. Um, and the best thing you can do is just treat them how you would everyone else. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think it matters. I mean, like, I've never thought about what you have under your clothes <laughs> and we're friends and we work together and we have intelligent conversations. So why would it matter if, yeah. you know, why yeah. would it matter if you were different? If, if, if you, if you, why would it matter if you were dressed a different way or whatever? Like, it wouldn't. I think it's, it's just like any other trace. I'd be like, hey, like, Rick, what's it like growing up in the UK? You'd be like, I don't want to talk about it. All right, I get it. Like, yeah. It's just things like that. I yeah. Guess. At the same time, I, do, I think I think a lot of people... A lot of people are daunted by it, right? Especially more older, traditional people. And they just think... Maybe they think, oh, I had to deal with all of this LGBT stuff or this same-sex marriage stuff, and I've made my peace with this. And now I have to worry about whether people are, are, are different genders or whether they don't want to use... Or whether they have preferences for different pronouns or whether they use different pronouns in their daily life and I get it right like there's been a lot of learning to do if in the last 20 years if you were brought up 50 years before that and what do I say to them? I say well just keep trying I mean listen and learn like the world these people existed when 70 years ago but they were brutally oppressed like you're, they're never going to go away you know, you, you, you're not going to make these issues disappear if you ignore them. You know, educate yourself, read, talk to people in a respectful way, um, and think we'll all get there. <laughs>